Hi, thanks for tuning in as we continue to go through Mark's Gospel. Some of you may have noticed the light in the background. I've been playing with the different colours in these different videos, trying to see what works and what doesn't. If you have any preferences, why don't you let me know in the comments or some other way. Now, how many of you like roller coasters? I have to say, they are not one of my favourite things. I mean, I don't mind the stomach through the back moments. I don't mind the feeling of free fall. What I don't like is that I'm not in control. I can't stop it whenever I want. I can't get off whenever I please. Today, we're going to look at Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. Here, Jesus does something absolutely amazing. But not everyone's happy. Why not? because they realize they cannot control Jesus. As we go through, you might find it useful to read along. There's a link in the video description to an online Bible. Just click it and it will take you to the passage for today. So what happens in this section? Well, it begins with Jesus crossing the Sea of Galilee. This time he goes to the southeast shore. He lands in an area called the region of the Gerasenes. Mark tells us that there was a man there who was possessed by a demon, by an evil spirit. Now, I don't claim to understand fully what that means, but it is important to understand how the Bible presents the world and the universe. It tells us there is more at work than the things that we can see. There are evil spirits who can harm and destroy. That's what's going on here with this man. Yet as Mark explains his situation, we see that this case was not your normal case of demon possession. The evil spirit is actually many evil spirits, and they have a powerful grip on him. In verses 3 and 4 we read this. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Here was a man beyond help. He couldn't be restrained. He couldn't be stopped. I'm sure he would have struck fear in the people who lived there, and they could do nothing about it. But that's not all. We also see his agony of heart. In verse 5 we're told, Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. What is this man? He's someone beyond hope. He's someone in a tragic place. No one can help him. But then, here comes Jesus. When Jesus lands, the man runs all the way to him and falls on his knees and he shouts out as loud as he can, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. Jesus speaks to the evil spirits inside him and commands that they leave the man alone. The evil spirits beg Jesus to let them go into some pigs. He says yes, they do. And the pigs go crazy and run into the lake and drown. The people who were looking after the pigs ran to the town and reported what had happened. The pigs were gone. I wonder if they thought they'd get the blame. Soon a crowd gathers. What do they see? Well, Mark tells us in verse 15. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Incredible. This man that no one could help, now healed and restored by Jesus. You'd think everyone would be excited that Jesus was there. Not this crowd. Mark tells us they were afraid. And when they heard about the pigs, they began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. Why did they do that? I think it's because they realised that Jesus wasn't safe. Yes, he's immensely powerful and can do incredible things, 
That's awesome. But they couldn't control him. They couldn't stop him if they didn't like what he was doing. So rather than take the risk, they asked him to leave. The man's response, though, was different. He begged Jesus to take him along on the boat. To him, Jesus was not the man who destroyed a herd of pigs, but the rescuer who'd saved him from a nightmare. He saw the goodness, the kindness, and the love of Jesus, and he wanted to follow him. Look, as we read about Jesus, we read about someone who is incredibly powerful and can do anything. And the crowd were right. We can't control him or tell him what to do. He won't always do the things we want and sometimes does things we don't want. Yet over and over, there's people like this man. There's Christians throughout history. Our church today is full of people who would say that the risk is worth it. Why? Because Jesus is good, because he's loving and compassionate, because he's the only one who can make us right with God. Is Jesus safe? No. Is it worth taking the risk to follow him? Well, what do you think? That's all we have time for in this video. Next time, we'll be looking at another incredible miracle that Jesus performed as he deals with another impossible situation. If you want to know when we bring that video out, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook. Hopefully, see you then.